Sorry, this evening we are celebrating something in bilingual, uh, Spanish, English, and something else. Um, probably first I would like to ask you to switch off your microphone. There is sound hearing. Please switch off your microphone. Um, I will soon pass the floor to our lecturer today, Vladi. Uh, he will present himself. Uh, but I would like to ask you if you have any questions or any comments on the things you are going to hear, uh, write them in the chat and afterwards he will answer the questions or will comment your comment. So, um, Vladi, the floor is yours. Um, you will present yourself. So, I will stop here and you can start. Okay. okay. Yes, thank you, Stefka. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me uh, today to give you this dinosaur themed uh, lecture. My name is uh, Vladimir Mikov, and in the next uh, half an hour or a bit more, uh, I will tell you the story of the dinosaurs, their biology, and whether or not we find uh, fossils of dinosaurs in Bulgaria. Uh, it is only fair to start the presentation with a short uh, introduction of myself. I am a paleontologist with a master's degree in geology and paleontology from the Sofia University, St. Clement Okritsky in Sofia, Bulgaria. My studies uh, involve uh, research on the bone tissues of uh, various fossil animals discovered in Bulgaria, including non-avian dinosaurs. Uh, I am also heavily involved in the research of the recently discovered uh, dinosaur fossil site in uh, western Bulgaria near the town uh, of Trun. And as you can see on one of these pictures, sometimes I like to pretend that, that I'm an uh, action star, something like Indiana Jones. Uh, Additionally, to being a paleontologist, I'm also a paleoartist, which is uh, a kind of uh, natural history illustrator, which uh, specializes on the reconstructions, which are scientifically accurate reconstructions of extinct uh, animals, uh, plants, and whole ecosystems. Actually, most of the artwork you are about to see in this uh, presentation is uh, my own artwork. And here you can see examples of it. On the right is uh, the Bulgarian cover of the best-selling popular science book, uh, The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Prof Professor Steve Brusati from the Edinburgh uh, University, uh, which I had uh, the chance to uh, illustrate. So basically, I'm both a kind of a scientist and an artist. So first, uh, we will start with uh, dinosaurs and what they are. I'm uh, pretty sure that all of us have seen uh, the movie Jurassic Park or uh, any of its many sequels, uh, but uh, I can assure you that uh, what we've seen on the screen, uh, on the screen uh, is uh, not necessarily what dinosaurs were actually like back when they, they were alive. So what are the dinosaurs? Dinosaurs are a group of uh, reptiles which lived during the Mesozoic uh, era, or at least most of them. Uh, and uh, dinosaurs were part of a much larger group of reptiles called Archosauria, which means uh, ruling reptiles. Archosauria, early in their evolution, splits into two major branches. Uh, one of uh, these branches to the left is the so-called uh, Pseudozoohia, 
uh, or the Croc wine branch of Arcosauria. Uh, this is the evolutionary wine which leads to modern crocodiles. But uh, what we see uh, today uh, as crocodiles is uh, just a remnant of a much larger diversity that existed during the Mesozoic. Uh, maybe it's hard to imagine, but uh, during the time of the dinosaurs, crocodiles were not only aquatic predators, but many of them lived on uh, land, uh, moved quickly with uh, limbs beneath their body. Uh, some of them moved on two legs, and uh, there were crocodiles uh, which didn't have uh, teeth, but uh, beaks, almost like birds. So, Pseudozoohians were extremely diverse millions of years ago. The other branch of the Archosauria is the so-called birdwine branch, or the Ornithodira which means bird necked. Uh, this group, Ornithodira, consists of two branches, one of which is uh, the branch of pterosaurs, or the flying reptiles, which many of us incorrectly think that they are dinosaurs, but uh, they are not dinosaurs. They are dinosaurs' first cousins in evolutionary sense. And the other branch is the actual actual dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are a very diverse group themselves and uh, they split on two major subgroups. One of uh, these subgroups it is called Ornithischia or bird-hipped dinosaurs and this is where most her herbivorous dinosaurs uh, are placed in. As you can see, Ornithischians include uh, the, the stegosaurs, which are uh, pretty easily recognized for their massive plates and spikes on the tail. Uh, stegosaurs' closest uh, relatives are the ankylosaurs or um, the armored dinosaurs, which uh, look uh, which looks uh, like uh, a living tank. And uh, the other groups are the ornithopods, uh, which includes uh, the duck-built dinosaurs and other smaller two-legged herbivorous dinosaurs and uh, marginocephalians, which uh, include uh, famous dinosaurs like triceratops and other horned dinosaurs. The other group, called Saurischia, or lizard-hipped dinosaurs, uh, include two major groups, uh, one of which is uh, sauropod dinosaurs, or the long-necked dinosaurs, which uh, we usually think when we hear the word dinosaurs. Here I have illustrated uh, the brachiosaurus, which uh, I'm sure we've seen in uh, Jurassic Park. And the other group, the last one is uh, the theropods or the meat-eating dinosaurs. And here we can see uh, the Tyrannosaurus rex and uh, its relatives, uh, other meat-eating dinosaurs like the raptors. This here is a uh, velociraptor. And uh, maybe surprisingly for some of you, uh, birds are also theropod dinosaurs, which means that dinosaurs did not really uh, went extinct at the end of the Mesozoic era. Some of them survived. It, it is just that we call them birds. So dinosaurs are different from other reptiles in many different ways, uh, mostly in regards of uh, their uh, skull ana anatomy, uh, the an anatomy of uh, neck vertebrae, uh, the morphology of the forelimb, but most importantly, in the structure of their hip bones and their thigh bones. Uh, their hip is constructed in such a way 
that uh, the uh, the hip joint is open and allows for the head of the femur or the thigh bone to enter into the uh, into the hip socket, which allows the animal to move with the uh, hind limbs uh, oriented directly direct uh, di directly beneath the body. So dinosaurs uh, walked upright pretty much like uh, we do and like uh, modern birds and uh, many mammals. Uh, this allowed them to uh, move much uh, quicker and much faster and to be more agile than uh, the rest of the reptiles, which you, uh, I'm sure, know that uh, move with uh, limbs spread out to the side, uh, sides of the body. Additional uh, future of their hind limb an anatomy, which allowed them to be uh, quite fast, is the ankle joint, which uh, uh, is structured like uh, a door hinge. And uh, this is also a huge adv uh, advantage to dinosaurs in comparison to uh, most other reptiles. And all of these anatomical features allow them to stand out from the rest of the reptiles and uh, be much more like uh, mammals and birds in comparison. Speaking, speaking of birds, uh, Another uh, typical feature of uh, dinosaurs is uh, that they have the so-called bird-like uh, breathing system, or maybe we should say that uh, birds have dinosaur-like uh, breathing system. Uh, unlike uh, mammals like us, uh, which uh, have uh, pretty large expandable lungs, Birds have very small, rigid lungs, which are uh, mostly attached to the back of the body, and uh, they don't expand much during inhalation. But uh, unlike uh, mammals, birds have uh, extensive system of air sacs, uh, which you can see here and uh, on the illustration uh, here. Which allows them, uh, which allows the air inhaled by the bird to go through the lung where uh, oxygen is being extracted and then passed on to the system of air, sac air sacs. And uh, when the bird exhales, these air sacs are compressed and the air in them is uh, put through the lungs again where there is a second extraction of oxygen. And uh, in this way, by a single breath of air, birds get twice the amount of oxygen that a mammal will do, which allows birds to sustain extremely, uh, extremely high uh, activity, much, much more than most uh, mammals. And uh, this also allows uh, dinosaurs having the same kind of breathing system to be really agile and energetic animals. Uh, maybe you are wondering, uh, how do we know that uh, dinosaurs have uh, had this type of um, breathing system? Uh, because uh, lungs uh, don't fossilize after all. Well, the air sac system of birds leaves marks on the bones, small holes, very small holes in certain bones uh, where the air sac system has intruded the skeleton and hollowed uh, the bone elements. We find the same holes in the bones we see in birds in non-avian or non-bird uh, dinosaurs. And this is how we know that uh, this kind of uh, breathing system evolved first in dinosaurs and uh, was only later passed on 
on birds. Uh, another thing that sets apart dinosaurs from other reptiles is how they grew. They, their bones uh, save the story of uh, how uh, dinosaurs grew from hatchlings to adults. And what we see in the bones is that these animals was, were extremely fast growers. They grew like uh, birds and large mammals. And here on the left, we see the bone tissues of the earliest dinosaurs. And uh, this bone tissue does not look like at all what we see in uh, large reptiles like, uh, li like crocodiles or Komodo dragons, uh, for example. All these small dots here are places, uh, are holes which in life were uh, taken by blood vessels and blood vessels are necessary for the animal to grow really, really fast. Uh, here on the right, you can see two pictures of the bone uh, tissues of uh, the Bulgarian dinosaurs, which uh, I will discuss a bit more uh, later. So, uh, what uh, we know about dinosaurs show that they grew really fast and probably this indicates that these animals were uh, warm-blooded like mammals and uh, birds. Maybe you are already thinking that the dinosaurs were uh, fast, uh, very efficient uh, breeders and uh, grew really quick. Maybe they were the rulers, rulers of the earth since the day one. But uh, that's not the case. Actually, when dinosaurs first appeared, they lived in the shadow of their uh, crocwine arcosaur cousins. And uh, here we can see some of these uh, crocodile relatives, which were the dominant animals in the Triassic period when dinosaurs first appeared. Some of them were heavily armored. Other were pretty big predators and uh, for first for the first few million years of uh, dinosaurs existence they were uh, mostly minor elements of the terrestrial ecosystems at the time but uh, they were waiting for their chance to take the throne and uh, became the dominant life form on land and the, their chance uh, appeared when the supercontinent uh, Pangaea uh, started to break apart. Uh, this breaking was uh, accompanied by major volcanic eruptions, which continued for about a million years or two million years. Uh, during which time uh, gigantic amounts of uh, toxic and greenhouse gases were released in the atmosphere. Uh, this led to a serious climate change, uh, which uh, on itself led to the one of the five major extinction in the last 500 million years. This is this this is the so-called uh, Triassic Jurassic mass extinction and uh, during this is extinction ev event uh, most uh, croc crocodile wine archosaurs became extinct and uh, this gave the chance to dinosaurs to fill in um, the uh, empty uh, ecological niches and uh, became the dominant terrestrial uh, group of animals for the next 130 million years. Uh, before another, another cataclysm drive the dinos most of the dinosaurs themselves to extinction. This time the reason for the extinction was a space rock, a pretty 
big asteroid with a di diameter of about 10 kilometers hit the Earth uh, on the place where is now the uh, Yucatan Peninsula and the Gulf of uh, Mexico. Uh, the explosion was immense, uh, much uh, bigger than we have seen during our history or we can imagine. Uh, estimation shows that uh, the amount of energy released during the impact was larger than uh, that uh, that will be released if we detonate all of our nuclear arsenal existing in the moment. Uh, this uh, impact event uh, caused uh, series of uh, series of events which led to the extinction of uh, the non-avian dinosaurs, which means all dinosaurs which were not birds, and 75% uh, of the rest of the life forms that, existing, that, that existed uh, during the end of the Mesozoic era. Other victims of the extinction were the marine reptiles, like uh, like this uh, mosasaur, other marine reptiles like the plesiosaurs, the flying reptiles, the pterosaurs, uh, the inoceramid uh, bivalves, and uh, the ammonites, which were uh, typical mesozoic cephalopods. All of them went extinct and also many, many others. So, after we've seen uh, the dinosaurs, their the rise and uh, fall from grace, uh, let's answer the question, do we have uh, dinosaurs in Bulgaria? And uh, I can assure you that uh, just uh, a decade ago, the answer that uh, most paleontologists would have uh, given was that no, there were no dinosaurs in Bulgaria. But some lucky finds changed those uh, views. Here you can see the first dinosaur bone uh, described from Bulgaria. This bone fragment was uh, discovered in uh, 2005 and uh, brought to the uh, National Museum of Natural History here in Sofia, Bulgaria, where I am currently a PhD student. And uh, back then, another student saw the bone and suggested that it might belong to a dinosaur. He contacted uh, uh, a specialist from the Portugal, and uh, they began to work together on, the, on this discovery and published the results in 2010. According to these paleontologists, the bone belongs to uh, Ornithomimosaur, which is a dinosaur from the group of dinosaurs called ostrich-like dinosaurs. Uh, these are extremely rare in Europe, with uh, the, best, uh, the best one preserved being the Pelicanimimus from the early Cretaceous of uh, Spain. You can see here a reconstruction of how the uh, Pelicanimimus uh, probably looked like. And here is another much more speculative reconstruction of the Bulgarian uh, dinosaurs. But ironically, the Ornithomimosaur was not the first dinosaur to be discovered in Bulgaria. The first bones were discovered over 30 years ago, but nobody knew at the time that these were the bones of the dinosaurs. They were discovered in a, discovered in a cave in the northwestern Bulgaria. The cave was uh, is called uh, Labyrintha. And uh, originally the bones were thought to be from a marine reptile, a mosasaur. Uh, that uh, same student I mentioned, uh, earlier, uh, saw these bones and uh, also once again suggested that uh, they might be from 
a dinosaur and uh, not a mosasaur. Uh, his suggestion turned out to be correct. And uh, later it was found that uh, these bones belong to a hadrosauroid, uh, a group of uh, derived uh, ev ev evolutionary derived uh, uh, herbivorous dinosaurs from the group of the so-called uh, duck-built dinosaurs. And here is a speculative reconstruction of uh, what uh, the Bulgarian di dinosaur might have look like. And here are other reconstructions of a much better known um, better known hadrosaurids from the North America. Columbiosaurus and Corythosaurus. But this is not the complete story of the Bulgarian dinosaurs. I dare to say that the story of the Bul Bulgarian dinosaurs is uh, just beginning and uh, luckily for me I play part in this. In uh, 2012 a mysterious bone fragment was brought to the paleontologist at the Sofia University for identification and during this time I was just beginning my uh, master's degree and the bone was given to this guy here Dochev, Do who became my scientific advisor a year later. And he showed me the bone and I suggested that it might be from a dinosaur. And uh, together with uh, Docho, I began to study the bone. And uh, a couple of years later, I confirmed that this was the third dinosaur bone discovered in Bulgaria. In uh, April of uh, 2015, uh, Docho and I uh, invited uh, our colleague Kotinka Christova from the National Museum of Natural History in Sofia to come with us to a field trip led by Sir Andrei uh, Tsonkov, uh, Mr. Andrei Tsonkov, uh, who was the person who discovered uh, this uh, fossil fragment. And he let me, uh, led us to the place where he found the bone. Uh, and we made an attempt to localize the fossil site, the rocks which sourced the bone. Unfortunately, we were not successful. But a couple of years later, on August 16th, 2017, Otinka Christopher returned to the area. And uh, this time, together with colleagues from the museum, uh, managed to locate the rocks containing the dinosaur fossils and discovered a couple of more, uh, a couple of more fossilized bones. Since then, we have conducted uh, three seasons of uh, field work at the fossil site, which proved uh, extremely successful. Uh, we discovered much more, much more than just the dinosaurs. Uh, we found uh, crocodile-like animals, uh, turtles, and uh, more than one species of dinosaurs. Uh, additionally, we collected uh, much uh, geological information about the area, uh, new for the science. And uh, what was uh, probably one of the most important things, we managed to uh, date the rocks uh, to the so-called Santonian Campanian boundary. Uh, this is a time which, uh, which is uh, poorly studied in terms of dinosaur paleontology in Europe, mostly because there, there are not many fossils from this time preserved in, uh, in Europe, uh, which makes uh, our work uh, pretty interesting and uh, novel in general. Uh, here on this slide, you can see what our work looks like during uh, during excavations. Uh, here 
I'm hanging on a rope, trying to look for fossils uh, several meters above the ground. The picture was taken uh, literally two minutes before I found uh, I find uh, a dinosaur bone just about uh, here. On the right, you can see a piece of um, turtle shell, fossilized turtle, turtle shell, about 84 million years old. And here I am looking for pieces of uh, bone on a stream bed nearby. Once uh, we conclude uh, our field work, uh, we take all collected fossils to the laboratory. And here you can see all the stages of the lab work. Uh, we start with uh, fossils preserved in uh, plaster, uh, which uh, we then remove. We clean the pieces and uh, once all pieces of the bone are cleaned, uh, we reconstruct them and glue them together because, as you can see on these pictures, uh, all bones are heavily broken when we get them out of the ground. Once the, once the bone uh, is uh, reconstructed, uh, we uh, we measure it, describe it, and uh, take photos. Uh, sometimes uh, there is additional step in the work when uh, we take samples from the bone for uh, the so-called paleohistological study, the kind of uh, study which I do for my PhD work. And when we take a bone, we process it and create from uh, the sample uh, the so-called thin section, which is a very thin slice of uh, bone, which allows the light to pass through it. So we can observe it under a microscope. And here you can see the dinosaur bone tissue under a microscope. And studying the bone tissue, I can um, get information on on whether or not the animal is adult or a teenager, uh, whether or not it was uh, uh, it was uh, experiencing uh, some uh, bone fractures, uh, how quickly it grew, and. Uh, other uh, similar information which is not uh, possible to obtain by just uh, studying the bone uh, itself. Uh, what we can say about uh, this uh, new fossil site is uh, that it proved uh, extremely important. So far we have discovered about six or eight groups or four limbed animals. And uh, here on the picture, you can see the bones of uh, some of them. Uh, these are bones of ornithopod dinosaurs, uh, bones from the upper arm, the lower arm, and this is a tail vertebrae. Uh, this bone here is probably uh, from the hip of uh, an ankylosaur. Uh, this one here is uh, upper arm bone of uh, probably a giant pterosaur, a giant flying reptile. Uh, this here is uh, upper arm bone of a turtle. And this bone here is uh, one of my favorite because I discovered it uh, last uh, September during uh, laboratory uh, work. This is the first fossil from Mesozoic frog discovered in uh, Bulgaria. But uh, why is uh, our fossil site so important? Like I said uh, a couple of minutes uh, ago, there are very few places in Europe which preserve fossil record from uh, this time, the Santonian Campanian boundary or about four, uh, 84, 
84 million years uh, ago. Uh, there are six localities uh, from the Santonian and uh, seven others from the Campanian. And uh, one hour is one of the most uh, diverse one in uh, terms of uh, taxonomic uh, diversity of the fossil fauna. This is why uh, our work is probably of uh, big interest for many colleagues throughout uh, Europe and uh, not only. But uh, besides dinosaurs, uh, we discovered fossils from uh, plant life. Plant remains uh, came in, uh, in three types. The first one you can see here, uh, carbonized uh, lenses. Uh, this is uh, basically a coal burnt plant material. Uh, we have uh, fossilized, uh, fossilized wood, like this one. And uh, probably mo most interesting is the amber, which you, you can see uh, here. One of our colleagues who works on, with us on the fossil side is uh, entomo entom entomologist. Uh, this is a scientist who study insects and he's looking into the amber in search of uh, prehistoric insects. Uh, something like uh, what the scientist in Jurassic Park did to recreate the dinosaurs, but unfortunately so far we have not found any insects inside this amber. amber and. Uh, I suppose this means no Cretaceous Park for us, at least in the near future. So uh, here you can uh, see paleogeographic reconstruction of the Europe. Uh, and this here is the Bulgarian fossil site. And uh, here you can see it uh, on the map of modern day uh, modern day Europe. Uh, our work uh, bears implication uh, not only for the work of paleontologists in Europe, but uh, uh, for paleontologists in uh, general. For many years it was uh, told that uh, dinosaurs were in decline many, many million years before they became extinct and uh, research conducted uh, throughout uh, Europe in the past uh, 20 to 30 years uh, began to challenge these, uh, these views. And um, our fossils are very, very important because uh, they fill the gap in our know knowledge about the evolution of dinosaurs in Europe and in general during the late Cretaceous uh, before the final stages of their existence on, uh, on this uh, planet. And uh, so far from the data we have collected, uh, we can say that uh, dinosaurs were not in decline but were diverse and uh, extremely successful. And probably if it wasn't for the asteroid which uh, hit the Earth 66 million years ago, uh, maybe dinosaurs would still be the dominating uh, group of animals on land and not mammals. Therefore, we should uh, thank the asteroid for our own existence. And uh, with this, I will end uh, this uh, presentation. Thank you very much, everyone, for the attention. And uh, special thanks are due to Ms. Stefka Kitanova and uh, her students for translating this uh, presentation to, uh, to Spanish. And I am leaving you with uh, this uh, beautiful landscape of the area where we discover our Bulgarian dinosaurs. Thank you. Uh, but you didn't left it, Vladi. Please okay, leave I will. 
<laughs> I will. I will. Um, okay, fine. Um, before I say thank you to Vladi, uh, probably you saw me how excited I was. Uh, uh, just a moment, Luis. Just a moment. Uh, did you see that Bulgaria and um, Spain uh, has links, relations, even from the Cretaceous period? Because the dinosaurs found in Bulgaria coincide or are very similar to those found in Spain. So you can imagine what kind of relations we have. Okay. Um, okay, tell us, Luis, and then I will follow. No, 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 tengo preguntas, fue un aplauso. No, but you roll the hand. So, well, yeah. Bueno, muchas okay. La verdad que me ha parecido nice. interesantísimo dentro de mi, de mi corte inglés. Pero mm, me queda impresionada la conexión que puede haber a lo largo de toda Europa. Eh, con, eh, con el de, desde Bulgaria por ejemplo, el último mapa donde se veía las zonas de España donde podía localizarse los dinosaurios la verdad que, que me ha impresionado eh. me ha dejado un poco no, yo no, no sabía desconozco del tema, ¿no? pero me ha, me ha impresionado sinceramente me ha gustado mucho, mucho muy curioso Transmitele la, la gracias gracias ¿eh? things that we can find in Spain and in Bulgaria. And later on will be more for the translation. And um, the second thing I would like to share, because it, I was surprised really, I saw my ex-student in two of the photos, so they worked together. I didn't know they worked together. Uh, yes, I didn't know, yeah. Um, and I, I will ask him also to do something. I will ask him to try to do that in Spanish, probably for, for the students and for us. Um, and uh, before I ask students to comment, I see a comment here, very attractive. Um, I would like to ask, because it was a surprise for me, uh, what about the body temperature of the birds? Do they have these body temperatures due to or because of this? Okay, lungs with um, air sacs within. I don't know. Have you got any idea, Vladi? <laughs> uh, I have uh, my own explanation, which I can't guarantee is. Uh, the correct one because this is a very very complex um, complex uh, matters uh, which i interestingly discussed with the colleague just an hour ago and uh, we couldn't agree on whether or not uh, the quick metabolism is the reason for the high body temperature or the high body temperature is a reason for the quick uh, metabolism I suppose, I, that, yeah. uh, I suppose that I suppose that birds have such a high body temperature compared to us is due to uh, they being uh, small, which means they uh, they need to produce a lot of heat with their metabolism in order to uh, keep them uh, warm, because uh, small one, small animal animals uh, wolves. Uh, heat much faster than uh, larger ones and this is one of the reason and the other one is probably because uh, birds are very very active and uh, flying uh, burns a lot of energy and yeah, it's uh, this not an energy, easy job it's not an easy yes, job not not an easy job at all yeah. especially for mammals like us it's it's not uh, it's not surprising that the only mammals uh, which uh, fly are bats. Okay, fine. So, uh, thank you, Vladi. But I would like mm -hmm. now to invite students or colleagues, if they would like to make comments or, or some questions or whatever. Can you read, Vladi? What, what is the biggest giveaway that lets you know that you have found found a dinosaur ball. Whoa, this, uh, this is a 
pretty good question. And uh, to be honest, until recently, I had no idea how to uh, recognize dinosaur bones when I found them. Uh, the first thing is uh, the age of the rocks. Uh, we usually know the age of the rocks in the region where the fossil was found. And um, if the age is uh, correct, which means that the rocks uh, formed, uh, were formed during the Mesozoic era, which is about uh, 250 to 66 million years ago, uh, then maybe uh, we have found a bone of a dinosaur. Uh, then another thing to recognize the bone as a dinosaur one is to uh, look uh, into its uh, cross section if the bone is uh, broken to pieces. Because uh, marine animals and terrestrial animals have very different uh, internal bone structure. And uh, then there are other subtle features. Uh, but uh, yes, age of the rocks is uh, one thing to uh, look after. And the other one is uh, knowing a bit about uh, anatomy of uh, the different groups of uh, four-limbed animals. OK, thank you. Any other question or comment or whatever? To be honest, for the first time I have heard about that in Bulgaria we had dinosaurs from him. I didn't know that. I knew that we were uh, under sea and this was a surprise for me. So, <laughs> yeah. It was a surprise for uh, most people, including uh, geologists yeah. and paleontologists. Actually, in 2010, I was... Uh, uh, I was doing my bachelor degree in Sofia University when the first papers describing Bulgarian dinosaurs were published in the scientific literature. And basically, uh, no one from my teachers knew about this. Okay. And uh, they never got it to the media, the TV or watch yeah. newspapers. So basically, 10 years later, uh, the first dinosaurs uh, were, uh, are still something uh, uh, Bulgarian people don't know about. Yet they know about uh, our more recent uh, work in, uh, in this new fossil site, which is uh, surprising for me. Okay, fine. And the other curiosity for me was that they, I saw a name that looked like Spanish one, Jorge no sé qué. You don't remember? No. Oh, no. Or Which? Portuguese. Portuguese, maybe. I see. Okay. Fine. Um, can you read, Vladi? Crocodiles could be... Consider dinosaurs that survived the mass extinction. Uh, well, this is this is a good question, and uh, it invites a discussion uh, discussion on topic uh, topics like uh, taxono taxonomy and uh, evolution. The short answer is uh, no. Crocodiles uh, are not dinosaurs, and they cannot be considered dinosaurs. Uh, crocodiles are second or third cousins of dinosaurs. I mean, they're completely different uh, branch of the reptile family tree. Dinosaurs, uh, the only dinosaurs that survived the mass extinction uh, are birds. So when you see a bird outside your window, you're looking at a living, breathing dinosaur. Even, even though the birds uh, don't look uh, much like uh, we imagine uh, dinosaurs, or at least uh, most dinosaurs. But uh, crocodiles are very interesting uh, animals on their own and probably deserve uh, another, uh, another lecture altogether. <laughs> okay. Fine. Any other?
So meanwhile, okay, you have another. Okay, are the bones we saw in the pictures current, currently at the Sofia Museum? Uh, well, the bones from the uh, first Bulgarian dinosaurs, the Ornithomimosaur, and one of the bones of the Hadrosauroid uh, can be seen in our little uh, dinosaur exhibit right now. Uh, the ones which we have uh, found in the fossil site uh, near the town of Tron are still being researched and thus they are not available to public. But uh, this will change uh, in a couple of years. Once we, we are done with studying the bones, they will be shown to public. Actually, I can share uh, a little secret for those of you who might uh, visit uh, the Nas National Museum of Natural History in Sofia in just a few months. So we are preparing a small exhibition uh, with stuff uh, which is uh, which have haven't been uh, shown to the public uh, before, and uh, one of these specim uh, specimens is going to be uh, a dinosaur bone from from the fossil site uh, near Tron. So very soon, the first uh, the first new dinosaur ba bone will be uh, shown to the to the, to the public. Okay, and if I may add here, um, the work he, the place he worked at, the National Museum of Natural History, is one of the places when you visit Sofia will be visited. So we hope one day to do that. And the other place we would like to visit, to invite you to visit, is Sofia University uh museum of the museum museum yeah. of paleontology and historical geology yeah fine and there is a very large a huge um grand, grandfather right? yeah of the elephant so you will see it again it's kind of good very huge one um and the section of this museum vladi works at uh, the paleontological section is relatively small. And they have other things uh, exposed yes, it's, there. It's so pretty, yeah. pretty small, but, but in a few years, but in, in a few years, I imagine that we will have a, a dinosaur room for our findings. So, so. Okay, I don't okay, know I'll who has written here. Ah, is this uh, Sophia? Is Sophia wrote that she's, uh, she's coming, so please yes, yes. call me and I will connect you with Vladi so he can guide you in the museum. <laughs> okay, sure. yes. great. <laughs> Fine. Any other questions or comments or...? Well, I, I am very impressed. Uh, congratulations, Vladimir. I'm very impressed about your, um, what you have said about the insurance. And um, now I am looking forward to visiting Sofia and see them. So I hope so. Okay. Thank you. We hope one day. <laughs> one day. One day. Okay, yeah, one day. I, I see a question in the chat. How was the ostrich-like appearance of the Ornithomimosaurus found out? Uh, I suppose uh, the question relates to the Bulgarian uh, Ornithomimosaur, right? So it's pretty much uh, hypothetical based on uh, my knowledge on um, the appearance uh, of other members of this group of uh, dinosaurs. Uh, what we have from this animal is basically just a piece of uh, its upper arm bone. So what you see is uh, mostly educated uh, guess and uh, it is meant to give a general idea of how uh, the members of this group of dinosaurs uh, look like and not how this exact animal uh, certainly, certainly uh, look like uh, in life. Uh, with, uh, with so much uh, fossil material, 
um, there is uh, not much else we can do except for uh, making educated guesses and in general I avoid to illustrate uh, so fragmentary uh, to illustrate dinosaurs known from so fragmentary remains because it, it is more more um, more fiction fantasy than uh, than actual scientific de data and uh, facts. So it's a guess. Yes, <laughs> fine. It's a guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, the Spanish one, the Pelican Mimus, uh, is uh, much more accurate because um, uh, the fossil, the fossil which was uh, found in Spanish, is uh, preserved very well. It's uh, it's very well preserved animal, beautiful fossil, and. Uh, that one reconstruction is uh, much more accurate. Okay. Vladi, any idea where it is in Spain? Uh, the no, fossil no. site is called uh, Los Hoyas, I think. Ah, I have, Las Hoyas. Uh, yes, uh, I, I don't remember where exactly in uh, Spain okay. it was uh, located. So I can't uh, provide more information, but, <laughs> but, but it, it is uh, very famous. It's a worldwide uh, famous fossil site. The other dinosaurs discovered there are Concavenatur corcovatus, which is a pretty large uh, meat-eating dinosaur. Uh, also uh, a fossil bird called Iberomesornis, I think. You can look for uh, those uh, those names, and uh, most certainly, certainly you will find information, a lot of information. And once you discover the bones, where and how do you store them? What do you do with them after you have finished observing them? Uh, well. Uh, when uh, when we finish uh, describing and studying the bones. Uh, we uh, preserve them in uh, the fossil depot uh, rooms for collection of uh, scientific uh, specimens in the museum. Uh, right now, I can't uh, I can't uh, remember the uh, the proper uh, word uh, for for those uh, for this kind of uh, depository. Uh, anyway, we, we preserve uh, we preserve all, all fossils because uh, part of the scientific uh, process is uh, uh, is other scientists being able to verify your claims or your results, and uh, this can only be made if other people come here and study the same the same fossils and. Uh, that's why museums or university scientific collections are important because they preserve these uh, specimen, uh, specimens for for the future generations of uh, scientists and uh, researchers. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing is uh, being thrown thrown away. Every, everything is preserved. It, it is just uh, just the way the science uh, the science works. Yeah. Because people can have uh, access to to do another study or compare or whatever. Mm -hmm. Precisely. Okay. Yes. Fine. Okay, I don't see any more questions or commentaries or whatever else. So probably one more time. Thank you, Vladi, for this lecture. It was very interesting for me. I don't know what how was it for the rest of the people, but having in mind that they did some questions um, seems to be interesting for them as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for Thank having you. me tonight and it okay. was a pleasure to you.
Okay, we hope to see you again. <laughs> bueno, me, me sumo a lo que dice nuestra alumna Sofía, que ya sabes que es búlgara, Stefak. Dice que muchas gracias sí, sí, y que sí. lo hemos disfrutado mucho. Vale. Eh, what she said is thank you very much that she was very interested in your lecture. So expect another invitation, Wadi. <laughs> With the pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. Bueno, <laughs> Lazaro. Genial. He speaks Polish. He speaks Polish, that's why. <laughs> okay, fine. Thank you, Wadi, again. And, Thank you. well, goodbye to the people around. So, see you later. <laughs> See you. Bye. Bye bye.